G'day guys, Matt Brand here. Check this out, it is the world's biggest piece of sh but, 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 it is the best car I have ever reviewed. You see, this is the car that is making you right now on your toilet watch me. It catalyzed my car reviewing career. It is so special to me, and I will tell you why in this video, that I've got Jacob Friendo behind the camera filming for free because he's a good friend. <laughs> so in today's review, we're going to take a look around what is one of the, just the worst and best cars in the world. We're gonna take a look at the exterior. We're gonna look at the interior. We're gonna see how it drives. We're gonna launch it and time it's zero to 100. And we're both gonna drive the car because this thing is really, really special to both of us. I'm super excited for this review. So let's just get straight into it. Now coming to the front of, wrong car. Now, coming to the front of the Fiat 595 Abarth Competizione, you can see that this one looks pretty damn special. And that's because it's got this matte blue paint on it, which is new for 2022, at least here in Australia. And this thing is also optioned up fully. I mean, fully to the point where drive away, you're looking at close to about 50,000 Australian dollars, like 43,000 with all these options, not drive away. That is insane. <laughs> that is so much money for this car, but it's almost worth it. I, I can't describe it. The thing about the Fiat Abarth before we go any further is that it's all about emotion. Objectively, this car isn't that great in any true way, but it is in emotion and the way it makes you feel. It's really, really, it's strange. It's really strange, but it works. So up front, you have your Bizenon headlights here. That is part of one of those optional packs. You've got some LED lights here and I like the split headlight design there. Here you've got some functional aero that helps to streamline air across the side and helps to cool these Brembo brakes. Painted yellow as part of an option. Coming to the rest of the front, you've got your Abarth logo there. I love it, or Abarth. I don't really know how to say it. I'm gonna butcher it regardless. It is tiny, this car, so small. But you've got a nice grill here, and this has got the Competizione body kit on it, which is essentially like a wide body kit. Makes this thing look so mean on the roads. Really, really cool car. All right, and then uh, coming to the side. Hurry, quickly. Quickly, watch time is really important on YouTube. Keep watching. So coming to the side, I love these. These really flared fenders here as part of that Competizione package. There's a really loud crow over there. Shut up, you're ruining it. Again, one of the optional extras this thing is fully optioned are these 17 inch wheels here and I think they look awesome. They are wrapped in Michelin Super Pilot, wait, what are they called? They're wrapped in Michelin Pilot Sport 3s. What do I have on mine? PS4s. Why are they, why are they three? That's old. That's an old tire. Okay. Anyway, they're still wrapped in Michelin, so I'll, I'll forgive it. Again, massive Brembo brakes, at least for such a small car. This thing is tiny. Really, really small. Coming to the rest of the side, this is where you can start to see that maybe this is a little bit on the cheap in some areas. You've got these scratchy plastic mirror caps here. There's also a train about to park. Yeah, g'day. You've also got these door handles, which just feel super cheap too plus there's no keyless entry there's no there's no keyless go it, yeah this feels like it's from about 2008 i love this though the abarth badge here and the 595 badge again it just looks so cool especially with like the the matte blue paint wow this thing is stunning okay let's take a look at the back and then coming to the back here again i just i love the way that this thing looks i really like the tail light design here with the body colored panel in there the abarth badge of course you've got a pretty meaty bumper down there and quad exhausts, which sound absolutely amazing. Take a listen for yourself. It's just such a cool package. Again, I wanna come back to the point that this isn't objectively a great car, and you, you'll see that through the video, but there's just something so emotional about it that I can't get past. Like I would, easily have one of these cars just by looking at them. But then there's other things too, right? Like you're looking at this and the release handle for this is horrible, really cheap. But I do like this, the, the roof spoiler up there. And also you've got a delete on the antenna up there and they've put a little scorpion up there instead. Just cool attention to detail like that. 
Let's check out the interior. Before we get into that though, I need to give a massive shout out to today's video sponsor, Car Vertical. Car Vertical works in over 20 different countries and gives you a full breakdown of your car's history. It can check for heaps of things, including mileage rollbacks, uh, damage history that isn't declared, and even has historical photos, which I love. No joke, Car Vertical has already saved my derriere. Because as you guys know, I'm looking for a new car and I was looking at a Fiat 500 after the Abarth 595. I absolutely love that. But the Fiat is half the car, but whatever, it's still a car. And I looked up one of the cars I almost pulled the trigger on and just check this out. So I went on to Car Vertical, and by the way, I use my link in the description below or in the pinned comment. It really helps the channel out, of course. But I put in the VIN number of this Fiat 500 and immediately saw there was an accident. Not instantly a no from me, but you know, a bit concerning. It's really cool because I can see it was manufactured in Italy and then registered in Australia, blah, blah, blah. But then damage detected in Feb of 2017. Uh, but then we see the damage record here. And yeah, that's not looking too good, uh, except, <laughs> check this out. I can see the photos and uh, yeah, look at that. <laughs> that is a total write off. This, no joke, has saved my bum. I almost bought this car. I'm so glad I didn't. Definitely use my link in the description below if you are going to be buying a car. This could save you from a lot of heartache. So thank you very much to Car Vertical for sponsoring this review. Click the link below to get 10% off your report. I highly recommend it. it. It really has saved my ass. Let's get back to the review. Now, I forgive all of its shortcomings but there are a lot, so let's get to it. Let's start with the first one. First of all, get a pretty nice key. I mean, nothing too special. The only issue is it's got no, you know, keyless entry and go. You have to turn it on this way. I'm too old for this. Or oh, too young, really. So let me start with what I don't like about the interior, because there, there is a bit. First of all, ergonomics, people harp on about this, but they're not great. I'm only 5'11". I'm really not that tall. My head touches the roof. Like, no joke. Doesn't help that it's got the optional sunroof, although I kind of like it. But yeah, I mean, I, I'm touching the roof. If I slouch down a bit, I don't. You can't adjust these seats in any sort of height way. And that, that leads to more ergonomic nightmares. For example, I'm sitting here. I'm far too close to the steering wheel, but still like weirdly not close enough to the pedals. It doesn't feel that great. But I will say, I've gotten used to it, and I'm totally fine with it now. The quality in here, it's okay. This one does have the nice Alcantara dash. Again, optional extra, you don't really need it. You know, there's some other scratchy plastics. The doors don't feel that great. But I couldn't care less about that, because I think the character and the way that this is all set up is really cool. Other deficiencies though, let's keep talking about them. The infotainment display is fine, although it has the world's smallest Apple CarPlay and Auto. It is seven inches on its own, and then it makes it even smaller for some reason when you're using those systems. And it's almost unbelievable. And actually with the infotainment display, there is no backup camera. You get backup sensors though. Um, and it's kind of easy to park this car anyway, so I don't really care because it's quite small. But again, you, you mean you would see that on, on pretty much any car these days. Up ahead of you is a digital instrument cluster, and it's pretty cool when you change between Scorpion mode, which is sport mode, uh, and between normal mode, it does change a little bit. Here's the really weird thing. When you're in normal mode, it says the red line is 6,000 RPM. When you put it into scorpion mode, it says the red line is 7,000 RPM. I found that the red line is actually about 6,500 RPM. It's just such weird nuances like that that make no sense to me. Um, and it would be such an easy fix. It's just moving the red uh, image <laughs> up a little bit more. But, I, you know, I don't know. The, the, Fair, okay, fair. The steering wheel is so nice. I love this. It's this leather with Alcantara on it. it feels so special. You've got carbon fiber inserts as well. It's just one of the coolest steering wheels out there. Strange that it's in here, but I'm not complaining because I like it so much. There's a couple of other things too. Air conditioning control is really easy to use. You've also got this button here, TTC. Actually, what does that even stand for? I've completely forgotten. Let me look it up. TTC, a bath. I know what it does. It's called torque transfer control. Essentially, it is a Bosch system that uses the brakes almost to act like a limited slip differential. So it breaks the inside wheel so you don't get that kind of, that, that traction cut out or anything like that. You have to turn it on manually every time, but it makes this car handle so much better. It's pretty surprising. What else is there to like? Well, as I said, you've got a sunroof up here, which is pretty easy to open and close, whatever. You've got your turbo bar gauge here, which tells you how many atmospheric levels your turbo is operating at. And that is actually really cool. Jacob behind the camera, he doesn't like it, but I really like it. I think it's pretty awesome. In terms of storage space, this is strange, right? You get four cup holders. 
So I take my phone out of there. They can actually fit a 600 mil water bottle in all of them. So pretty impressive. The glove box down here is actually an enormous size too. And I've also got a storage area over to your right. So it doesn't feel as small in here as it actually is. The seats too, these are optioned with the optional say belt seats and they are pretty amazing. They feel so supportive. Genuinely one of the best seats I've sat in, even if it is a bit of an ergonomic nightmare, as I said. But you do get nice side bolstering, but it's not too aggressive. And me being, you know, as I said, 5'11", but I'm pretty heavy, they hold me in really well and are very supportive in every way. I really like them. Don't know if you need them as an optional extra, but yeah, I, I wouldn't complain if I had them. And then in terms of connectivity, you got two USB points down here. You got a 12 volt socket there too. Oh, and how could I forget about this? The five speed manual feels so nice. It's like this little metal ball here. Really easy to, to drive and it feels like super impressive for a manual. Five speeds, you don't actually need the six speed I found. Even though on the highway, you are sitting at pretty high RPMs. It does make a bit of a noise. It's not the end of the world. However, there is also a four speed auto that you can get with this. Don't do it. It's it's just not worth it. The five speed manual is the way to go. And by the way, this thing doesn't have like cruise control or anything like that. So it's, it's not the best daily driver out there because you know, you're sitting on the highway and, and your foot is, you know, smack bang on the floor and you're sitting at like 3000 RPM. It's a bit of a racket in here. Anyway, let's talk about back seat. It might be a bit of an ergonomic nightmare up front, but it's actually almost a better situation in the back. And I'll show you what I mean. So to get into the back, we just pull this lever here, which is actually a pretty cool lever. Push the seat forward. We can do that from either side, by the way. And then, okay, that wasn't as graceful as I remembered. Ugh. But we get in, I'm sitting here. This is like a normal adult person seating position. I'm 5'11", as I said, and I couldn't fit back here. There's so much leg room because these seats are, are jacked up into the sky for whatever reason. I can't see in front of me, like, at all because these seats are so sporty. But it's actually pretty spacious otherwise. We could, we're not going to do it, but if we close the door, there is enough, like, leg room. You've got a little armrest here. You've got your cup holders back here too. It's actually not a bad place to be. I'm, I'm amazed by it. Let's talk about practicality though. Now, coming to the back, you would expect this to be horrible, but it's actually surprisingly not. It's shaped like a triangle. I, 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 don't, I really don't know how else to describe it. You've got the weirdest, tiniest parcel shelf I've ever seen. But when you're actually here, you've actually got a decent amount of room. And then if you reach around in a really awkward position, you can put down these back seats. We can take out the world's smallest parcel shelf, but it's actually kind of cute. And then you can see we have a large amount of room. I actually don't know how else to describe it. It's a, it's a pretty large amount of space. And we've also got a false floor here and underneath is a tire repair kit. So, uh, I mean, you're never gonna get a full size spare in the back of one of these. So yeah, I mean, the boot space is actually pretty good, but even better are the specs. Let's talk about it. Okay, so talking about the specs of the Abat Competizione, it's, it's a bit of a mixed bag. Actually, it's not. Objectively, this engine is really small, absolutely tiny. It's got 1.4 liters of spicy meatballs going through its system at any given time, uh, AKA it's a 1.4 liter engine. That's its display. Anyway, let's not talk about it. It does have 132 kilowatt of power, 250 newton meters of torque. It's four cylinders. And this engine is I think it's absolutely amazing. I can't attest to its reliability. Frankly, I don't know. And if I own one of these, I don't think I'd care because the sound it makes combined with the most outrageous exhaust system in existence, this thing is amazing. And it only weighs a ton. So it gets up to speed really, really quickly. Also take a look at that. That is stunning. Ah, well that's hot. But it's also stunning, <laughs> the Scorpion badge. Again, coming back to that, uh, that emotion side of things. This car is all about emotion and I feel emotional. Like I could write, I could write a, a ballad, the black swan. I would write that after driving one of these and you'll see why. In fact, let's, let's do that. Let's, let's drive it. Okay. So Fiat claimed that the 595 Abat Competizione will do zero to hundred kilometers an hour in about 6.7 seconds. But what will it actually do? I've got my specialist timing gear here. It uses satellites to tell how quickly we're going. Pretty accurate stuff. So as long as I don't reach that really low fuel cutoff, I should be okay. Okay, so let's do it. We're gonna drop the clutch. Okay, it wasn't the greatest. Okay, zero to 108.83 seconds because I hit the bloody fuel cutoff. Ugh. Okay, I'm gonna assume that the red line is 6,000 RPM. 
and I was kind of hoping I could get all the way to 100 in second gear, but it stops at 97 kilometers an hour. So let's try that one more time. Okay, last time, here we go, come on. Horrible. Oh, 0 to 107.98 seconds. That's the best I can do. I'm really disappointed. I was really hoping, do you know what it could be? And I'm not even kidding here. I weigh 100 kilos, okay? Uh, that genuinely could be stuffing up the equation for this car. Maybe if I was a 70 kilo man in my prime, that would be better. But I'm not, I'm fat. All right, let's link back up with Jacob in the car and explain why this is such a special car to both of us. This drive part is gonna be broken up into two parts. One where Jacob and I are driving and then the other part where I'm just driving around Saucy Corner and actually giving you proper thoughts. But I wanted to explain why the Fiat 595 is so important to both myself and Jacob. And it's because this was kind of the car that kind of started this obsession with cars. There was one day where Jacob and I, I think I just said to Jacob, let's go and test drive and a bath. We were clearly bored. Yeah, we were bored. And I like had my driving skills, especially with manuals, were horrible. But we came to this dealership and we got into an a bath and it was the best drive of our life. So I thought, hey, while we've got this car, let's recreate that. We had a good time in that car. But to recreate that, we're gonna need a burnout now. We I did burn the clutch out. But I'm taking us on the same route that we went on last time. Now I've driven probably 200 cars <laughs> since then. Um, and this no longer feels as crazy fast as it did, but I've got some clips which I'll play now and you can see our reaction to it. We were blown away. Holy sh And this is really what kind of, as well, kick-started my love of hot hatches. I just thought it was the coolest thing ever, ever, like it sounded amazing. And we went down this street, I remember, maybe got it going up to like 60 kilometers an hour, just thinking that it was like a racetrack. Oh man, that's so true. I remember, I remember feeling the steering wheel actually fighting <laughs> against me. I was like, oh my God, yeah. this car has so much power. Oh, and now you're, uh, you're, your base model Mitsubishi Lancer has almost as much power as this car. <laughs> 110 kilowatt. And that's still, that, that's still all we did. Fast. Yeah, but that, still... that's all we did. We work first, second, done. You yeah. know, no joke. Out of all the cars I've had this year, planned or not, this has been the car I have looked forward to most. I've had it booked in for about three months now, um, which is really unusual. But my calendar is so full at the moment with cars, and I have been looking forward to this so much. And as I said, it's not a good car. Really, it's 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 not, but it has this emotion to it that is just on another level. And with that, I think it's time for you to drive. Feels like you're in an SUV almost, yet you're in the world's smallest car. My helicopter is hitting the roof. That's a bad thing about this car. If you're wearing a helicopter hat, <laughs> it doesn't work. It's not gonna work. I'm sorry, guys. That's a, that's a valid consideration, man. Go. So if you guys are thinking about in a bath, think again. <laughs> It's just such a silly car, but it's amazing. I love it. Dude, we got the aircon on. Turn it off. I need more power. Yeah. <laughs> 1.4 litres of love. I'm gonna open the window a bit so we don't die and the cameras don't overheat. Oh, man. By the way, I've got good news for everyone who's watching this, um, all three of you. Ooh, Jacob is gonna start to be a uh, mainstay on the channel. He's gonna help me film my reviews from now on. Don't worry, I'll be behind the camera. Yeah, that's, that's one of the rules. And if he's in front of the camera, he wears a helicopter hat because I have decided that that's, that's like my catchphrase you know is what? like sauce and his staple is the helicopter hat. I'm gonna need an upgrade. If I'm gonna be wearing it permanently, I need four, I need a quad <laughs> I'll look into right. it. Thank you. I'll look into it. Okay, so now it's time to drive the Fiat bath properly. It's definitely not the fastest car in the world, but it does have the world's greatest turbo lag. <laughs> because essentially what they've done is they've taken this 1.4 litre engine and they've just plopped on a pretty big turbo onto it. And yeah, it's dead from about 3,000 RPM, but then you can see it spooling here. 
and it really takes off. So how does it drive when we're at highway speeds? Well, right now I'm going 90 kilometers an hour. I'm sitting at about two and a half thousand RPM, so really not the worst. Road noise, it, it is very loud in here. I mean, there's not much insulating me from the road, even with the body of this car. It's just so small, but it's surprisingly comfortable. I did not expect the Abarth to be so comfortable when you're just driving along. This suspension setup, it's a fixed damper setup is almost perfect. I, I don't know how else to describe it. It is super duper comfy. And even though it doesn't have some things that you would really expect to see like cruise control or really any sort of safety systems, I don't really care. I think I would care if I was actually doing you know, a couple of hours of commuting every day, then I would start to care. But for example, if this is just your grocery go-getter or your weekend runabout, it is perfect for that. Now, I've been driving this thing around exclusively in sport mode. I mean, I just don't really see the point in driving around in normal mode. It kind of just dulls everything down. So I'd rather have everything at, uh, at fun percent. Speaking of fun, let's put on this TTC here and give this thing some sweet, juicy sauce. Man, the way that the turbo spools, the way that the exhaust sounds, it is all so ridiculous. And yet it all works so well. Okay, so I'm at the twisties now. We're gonna give this thing some twisty sauce. And I think this is where this thing really comes alive. So, downshift. It handles amazingly well. And that is helped by the fact that the wheels are literally in each corner of the car. It is so much fun. This is a proper hot hatch, by the way, like proper hot hatch. So I am noticing a bit of build quality things. For example, if my foot accidentally slips off the accelerator, it makes this sound. It like, it's almost like a cartoon noise. <laughs> you wouldn't see that in other cars. Also, when you start putting the stereo a bit high, these speakers aren't that great and it starts to rattle pretty much everything within here. Again, this thing is, is built to a budget and you can tell. But then in other parts, you know, you're holding onto this steering wheel and the car feels a million bucks. This shifter is so good. And I did not expect to like it because I heard it was five speed. I'm like, nah, not gonna like this. I actually really like it. Alas, here we are at Saucy Corner. Let's give this thing some sauce. Oh, bog down there. <laughs> you can just hear the turbo kick in. Uh, understeer. Actually, you know what? That did a really good job. I did not expect that. For a car that doesn't really have a limited slip differential, this uh, TTC system is really good. And that's not always the case. No power there. Got to downshift. I love seeing the turbo gauge just go whoop. <laughs> it's so cool. You know, this car drives surprisingly well. I, I will say that I am starting to feel a little bit uncomfortable now. I've been driving this car now for about two hours today, actually. And uh, yeah, it's really not the most ergonomic. These seats are amazing. It's just the way that everything adjusts or the lack of adjustment that uh, is kind of doing my head in. And like, I can't actually fit my hand here to adjust this seat. I can't turn it back. I literally have to open the door to be able to do it. How ridiculous is that? But then you act a little bit silly with this thing. Get it up to its weird six or six and a half thousand RPM, whatever the hell it is. I just, I just changed it six thousand now because I, I hate the fuel cutoff. But my God, you can have so much fun in this thing. Give this thing a little bit more sauce before we get into my final thoughts. Downshift to second. You are sitting way too high. <laughs> I'm sitting so high. I feel like I'm in an SUV. Yet I'm in the world's like smallest car. Oh, these Brembo's are pretty good. <laughs> oh man, this thing is a hoot. I love it. All right, let's get into my final thoughts. All right, Jakey boy, what are your thoughts? What are your final thoughts? Lay it on my three subscribers. Honestly, it's not as fast as I remember. However, it's still pretty awesome. I like it. It's a lot of fun. And I think that's the, the moral of the story here is that it's it's just not a great car. It's not a great value car. Having said that, my God, it has so much more character than an i20N that I reviewed and I absolutely loved. Just because it is so dumb mm. in every way. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. I think that's the only way, but it's not ridiculous in a bad way. It's ridiculous in an amazing way. Absurdly good. Absurdly good for a car that is this old. 
and that's why it's probably still selling to this day and their prices are actually really good on the used car market even considering COVID stuff i think the exterior is beautiful the interior i mean it's amazing on the one hand but is just so bad it's an ergonomic nightmare it has a lot of cup holders though it has a lot of cup holders why it has four cup holders i'll never know for four cappuccinos <laughs> yeah. uh, and the way it drives right it's 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 just it's so crazy uh, and it's a lot of fun to drive so I, I mean honestly i would buy one of these in a heartbeat i don't think i'd spend the extra 10 grand on all the accessories as cool as it looks i think if you can get one of these for the driveway price of like 36 grand that's actually pretty good that's a that's a spicy meatball spicy meat the ball but let me know what you guys think of the fiat of bath down in the comment section just below that like button say thank you to jacob for coming into this video oh, you're very welcome no i i wasn't saying thank you okay and uh subscribe. I'd love to have you around. And as always, I'll see you next week.